Professor Russell Morris is the winner of this year's Royal Society Brian Mercer Award for Innovation. Together with his research team at the University of St Andrews, he's developed a pioneering method of trapping and releasing nitric oxide gas from within structures called metal organic frameworks. This work has huge potential in antibacterial activity and wound healing. Nitric oxide is a really unusual and interesting gas. We know it very well as a toxic gas, something that we try and get rid of all the time from the, from the exhaust of cars. But it's always around in your body, and your body uses it all the time to do various different things. Dr Richard Weller is an academic dermatologist at Edinburgh University. His research work in the role of nitric oxide in skin physiology crosses over with Professor Morris's innovations. It seems that one of the most, in, certainly most important uh, findings that came out quite early on was that NO was involved in wounds healing. The inside cells in the blood vessels produce little amounts of nitric oxide all the time and they control how, how the muscles contract and expand around, around the blood vessels and so controlling the blood pressure. Diabetic patients in whom chronic ulcers, non-healing wounds, are a major problem. Uh, produce less NO. So suddenly all the suggestions are there saying that if we could um, in some way deliver um, nitric oxide to the skin we could help wound healing. Unfortunately it's pretty difficult to handle a toxic gas. So what we're doing in this project is looking to see if we can figure out a way to store and deliver the gas really safely in the right amount at the right time and in the right place. Too much and it's toxic, too little and obviously it has no effect. The way we store our gas is to use this new type of material called a metal organic framework. Metal organic frameworks are three-dimensional porous materials that are made from metals, shown in green, and organic linking groups, shown in grey, to form honeycomb-shaped porous structures. Looking at a single channel of the material, the nitric oxide molecules are absorbed into the centre of the pores and attach themselves to the metals at the corners of the channel. Here they're held strongly until the material gets exposed to water, for example from skin moisture. The water molecules come in and get absorbed into the channels and displace the nitric oxide, which is then released back into the environment. And what we are managing to do is we are trapping um, the NO within the framework, within the metal organic framework. And then we are able to actually release this in, in very low amounts, actually making it a non-toxic gas and actually making it biologically active. So now the challenge is we've got to work out how to make these materials in enough quantity. Sometimes it's just not as easy to make the same material on a 10 kilogram scale or a 100 kilogram scale as you make on a 1 gram scale. This is about the largest scale we can do here in St Andrews. So um, this additional funding will allow us to go out and source that ex external um, resource. And we've also got to work out how to make the materials, how to manufacture the materials so that they can be put into a real uh, formulation, like a bandage for wound healing. So at the moment we are looking at just releasing it from the powder but when we formulate it into the polymers then the, uh, the type of polymer and the structure of the polymer and the thickness of the film actually of the polymer film can then change the, the rate kinetics of the NO release. But the simplest would be just to have a little piece of gauze like a normal bandage and then coat it on the back with, this, with our materials that will be, have nitric oxide in them as you put it on somebody's skin, water will be able to get in and then deliver the nitric oxide out to the wound. Ian Muirhead works extensively in early stage university spin-out technology companies. He's working with Russell and his team with their business plan and raising funding for potential commercial ventures for their metal organic framework innovation. One of the things I always look for in, in working with teams is not just about the technology, but the people with it as well. Um, doing a spin-out company is, is always a, a long journey, uh, and it is like a marriage. You've got to get on with the people, so Russell's got a great group there. Russell's great to work with. He is an academic insofar as he's quite laid back, but he's very focused as well, and quite unusual for an academic insofar as he does have a commercial side to him. The Brian Mercer Award is very important, obviously, from the point of view of uh, 
raising the profile of the work in Russell's group and I think that helps considerably when actually you're taking technology like this to market. People have heard of it, the award gives it uh, an extra level of credibility. The Royal Society project will really help us in developing the basic chemistry that's required, the, getting the real data on the antibacterial properties and on the, on, on the wound healing properties themselves for the next stage. Because the next stage it becomes really critical then that we can, we can take it into real clinical tests. And the great thing about Russell's work is internationally recognised. But knowing that that could potentially go out there and help people's lives, that really drives you. In your work. You know what you're doing will have a, an impact on someone eventually. So this, this two-year project will allow us to finalise all the data we need to put these materials onto people. Because at that stage then we think we, we're going to have a really good product.